Hello everyone, this is CT Jet, and before this video even starts, I want to say that I had a host of problems, including my parents, and also closing it at the end, so, I'm also sick, so that's, that's better. But, uh, if you hear anything, that was my parents, so, I'm sorry. So, enjoy the video! Hello everyone, this is CT Jet 99 and welcome back. If I sound at all sick, it's because I am, I have a cold. Uh, yeah, and I slept till 3 p.m. today, which is unheard of for me. But anyway, today what we are going to be talking about is basic gates and how to use them. So I'm going to pull out some of them here. Uh, we got the inverter, the sparsifier, the toggler. What else do we have? Okay, well that's good. Uh, signals. We have the XOR, OR, AND, NAND, and IF. Set it. Should be it. And finally, oops, I'm going to get a few debuggers out, and I'm also going to get some splitters. Also, probably the if else. Three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, no, I don't need that many splitters, do I? Derp. Oops. Okay. I'll probably just need uh, one just to show you what it does. And then I'm going to get some debuggers. This is what I need a lot of. Actually, you know, let's do uh, graphs. Because then you can actually see the signals. Three, four, five, etc. Six. Seven, eight, nine. Oh my gosh, that's a lot. Now, whenever you're building a circuit, it's a good idea to use a breadboard. If I can find it. Looks like this. And you can attach all your circuits to it. So that's nice. Uh, so many things. to attach. Alright, now let's get some of these things. Let's get a robotics. This is going to look really bad, I know. I'm sorry. RC, one, two. I think there's a way to just shift click or something. Nope, it can't. Dang it. Three. Actually, for these, we're probably going to want RC basics. <sighs> I could just put two in one. That works. One, two, three, four. Alright, so the first one is an inverter. So, if we play, you can see that if the signal is on, or if it's off, it'll go on. But if it's on, it'll go off. As you can see, I will also illustrate that this is a one that can you can use to, uh, basically negate the signal, so if you watch, it'll actually change, not just do it, so it'll do 100 minus this, I believe is what it is, or, uh, no, it's what, it's, uh, I don't know, I don't know what the equation is he uses, but it'll negate the signal, like this, as you can see. So the next one is the sparsifier. So, 
I'm going to hook up a button to this. So as you can see, whenever I click, it'll just output a one signal or a one tick signal for the a remainder of the time. You can also use a spice sparsifier plus. So whenever you release it, it'll do that. It'll output a signal too. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to show you that the grapher can be used to output directly through this. So as you can see, now it's toggling this toggler, which makes sense. It's called a toggler, but it needs a one tick signal or else it'll just keep toggling. Uh, so if I disconnect these and I delete this, I think that's right. No. Okay. Oh, no. No. Bad. So as you can see, it just keeps toggling. All right, I swear, my parents have a thing, something that they know, and now my Camtasia is gonna crash. Of course. Wait for it, it's gonna crash. Well, now I'm getting the worst frame, so thanks parents. They, they know when I'm recording and they'll just, you say, hey, are you, are you doing it? And as you can see, this is toggling really fast, which is why it needs a sparse of fire. Oh, freaking parents sometimes. Anyway, let's hook this one up. So this is an XOR. Oh. No. And I'm going to have to use these. So... An XOR means that only one of the outputs, and it's not like this, so only one of the outputs can be on, or else it'll turn off, as you can see. And if it, and if the value is above, or if it's equal to 5, then it will output, so or it'll register the input. An OR gate is basically if either of the inputs is on, then it'll turn on. So it's kind of like the XOR gate. But ex it's not exclusive. That's what that stands for. So now, as you can see, either of the inputs can be on. But it won't do that. So now, let's get this one. And this one. This one's an AND gate. Both of the inputs have to be on for it to register. And this one's a NAND gate, which is the opposite. It's the inverted. Alright. Gosh, my parents. Literally, whenever I'm not recording, it'll be the quietest house in the neighborhood. When I'm not, or when I am recording, they will be like, CT! Uh, blah, 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 yelling. Yelling, yelling. Alright. So as you can see, if one input's on, it doesn't do anything. If the other input's on, and that input is on, and then it will output. Now, what's this one? I forgot. Oh, this is the NAND gate. I didn't output this one to a thing. Thing. Alright. So as you can see, it's on. If one input's on, it doesn't do anything. If the other input's on, it turns off. So it's basically an inverted AND gate. But without the without the need for an inverter. What's this one? IF gate. Alright. Uh, input this. And input the value. So now, an IF gate will output a value only if it's on. So as you can see, I'm not doing anything, but if I raise this value a little bit, it'll output that value whenever this input is on. As you can see. So that works. And if else... Uh, ch -ch -ch. Let's see. So if else, 
what it does is if it's not on, it'll output to this value, but if it is on, it'll output to the other one, as you can see. So that's basically all that is. So these are the basic gates. I believe there's no more. Oh crap. Well, that's the end of today's episode. If you liked it, thank you, and subscribe and do other things. And that was 10 minutes. Goodbye.